Hey, could you hold this for a second? Hammer, please. Can you help me hold it for a second? Hey, I am Jelle, and I could really use a helping hand right now. So, instead of getting someone all the way to my room, I'm just going to make one myself. Last time I made a little robot friend, everything was totally fine. So, why would this time be any different? <coughs> Alright, so making a robot arm is pretty complicated. There's a bunch of things to calculate and parts to collect, so I prepared a little list for me to keep track of everything. Let's take a look. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees. Okay. Cut tomatoes and small... Okay. Wait a minute. That's the wrong list. Where did I put the robot list? Oh, <laughs> there it is. It was next to the kitchen robot all along. Let's get started. In order for my robot arm to actually be useful, it needs to be able to reach all around the place. And before we settle on a design, we need to determine the work envelope, a smart people term that just means everywhere the robot can go. In my case, I like to imagine like half a dome and able to reach all those points at different angles so it can hold stuff and maybe even pour me a nice drink or so. This rules out the most basic designs, like the gantry ones. They are pretty good at moving stuff around, but they are really not the rotating type. And they also don't look very cool and, and they are like really big and you know, okay, I admit, at this point, I'm just looking for an excuse to build an arm like, like some joints, some shafts, and motor of all sizes. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little robot arm. But Jelle accidentally added another ingredient to the concoction, Pinterest boards. Thus, the robot arm design was born. Using their extreme precision, the base, elbow and wrist have dedicated their power to moving wherever they want in almost no time. Maybe it didn't go exactly like that. But still, I designed an arm by combining some cool stuff I saw online. Something I didn't like was that with a lot of arms, the elbows couldn't close all the way. So taking a slightly different approach, I went with an offset design, but only for the upper arm. This keeps it in line with the base and makes calculations a lot easier. The wrist, on the other hand, doesn't have to close all the way. Rather, it extends further out, so you can keep it in line with the arm. Then, the final joint is another rotating one for the wrist roll. That way, I think I can do everything I need to do. Oh yeah, and did I mention that I wanted to hang it on my ceiling, right in the middle of my lamp? And the length of the arm has to be the radius of my RGB lamp I made last time so I can control the light and show where the arm is going to go. Something like this. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty cool. It can reach stuff, rotate a bit, and fall back up if I'm not using it. Now, how do I go about this? Hmm. I created my carpet model in Unity and started tinkering with my IK frameworks to figure out if all the joints were designed correctly. The only things that roll are the base and the wrist end. So I have to slightly modify the code to separate the parts out. I also simplified the elbow pivot, so that the arm always goes straight from the center to the target. Oh, look at it, it's very good at following the target. Maybe, maybe a little too good. I don't want him going to the ceiling, <laughs> so I uh, definitely need to remember that. Since my arm needs to be able to handle stuff, I added an offset feature to move back and forth and rotate around a virtual point. Look, it can already pour me a virtual drink. Now I just need to bring it to the real world. Like, like actually build it. Time to figure out what motors I need. Since the robot arm is mimicking the human arm, the joints realistically only need to rotate about 100 degrees. And for that, a server motor is perfect. You can very easily control it and tell it exactly what angle it needs to go. And it also has a lot of power for its size. But how strong should they be exactly? Hold on to your butts, ladies and gentlemen. Time for high school physics explained in 15 seconds. To make sure your robot arm is strong enough, you need to figure out how much torque you need. Torque is the amount of force you need to rotate something at a certain distance away. You might have noticed that when you're holding your shopping bag from the latest shopping spree, they are much harder to hold far away from you than close by. Well, it's the same for motors. The further away weight is, the harder it is to rotate. This has been your physics lesson for today. So I went from the end to the base and added all the weights and distances to each joint. But for the roll, since I want to keep rotating it all the way around, I can't use a limited angle servo motor anymore. So for the final joint, I need to get a stepper motor, like the ones that 3D printers are using. Of, um, well, there's nothing really being lifted, so the smallest ones should be fine, right? <laughs> Into the shopping cart you go. All right, the parts are ordered. So uh, while we wait, let's start programming. 
To control the whole arm, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi. It has a lot more computing power than an Arduino, but it's still very small in size. So it'll fit nicely on the arm. But before we get to that, how are we going to test everything? Well, let me explain. This little robot arm is going to help me figure out all the complicated stuff. It mimics the same joints, but only at a smaller scale. So he's going to need a cool name. Let's call him Servo. You get it, huh? Because he has like three little servos. All right, first step, getting the joints to move. I can use this handy controller to control all the servos with only a couple of pins on the Raspberry Pi. I just have to set an angle and... That's fast. All right, I have to do something about that. The servos are just going to break the arm if it keeps jerking around like that. You know, this problem is actually pretty similar to the weird linear movement you get with bad animation. Just moving from one point to another as fast as possible without any easing. Now, how do we solve this? Well, first, instead of just telling the servo to go to the end point as fast as possible, we give it intermediate points. This is already much better, nice and slow, but not too slow, of course. Then, instead of making the next point in the sequence, always the same distance away, we can use another function to make the distances increase and decrease over the track. This creates an easing effect, much better. Look, now we can like smoothly go from one place to another. Next step, going to a specific spot. This is where the IK comes in again. Setting the robot arm joint by joint is usable, but in reality, I just want to tell it where the end needs to be. And that's it. I just used the same IK code from my Unity prototype, but now it's in Python. I used my magical syntax converter for that. Look at him go, so magical. So after deleting most of the syntax, I made this easy functions use where you just enter some coordinates and off he goes. And after some testing, it seems pretty accurate. Now that I can control the robot arm, I need a way better and accessible way. I'm not going to keep typing commands in my Pi all the time. What is this, Linux? No, 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 no. I want to be able to control it from everywhere without any typing. So even my grandma can control it. So just like I did with my lamp, I'm running a web server on it that allows me to control the arm from whatever device I want on the network. Look, it even works with my DS. Now, that's what I like to call a pro gamer move. Oh, my parts are here. Time to get to the actual full-sized arm. I have this basic shape that I want to follow, but I have no idea how I'm going to fit everything in there. Let's just take it joint by joint. Starting with the easiest one, the elbow. This only has one servo, so keeping with the round team, something like this should keep everything together. But that brought me to the base. Because I wanted the arm to keep rotating, I had to basically put all the stuff in the shoulder. That left me with a pretty big problem though, to can't keep rotating wires. Well, I mean, Technically you can, but then you'll just end up with a jumbled mess like when you left your retro earphones in your pocket. And eventually, you have like separate wires. And at this point, pumping all the power I need wirelessly is not really an option yet. So I found this little handy thing on the internet. It's a slip ring. Basically, it's a wire connector that you can keep rotating with the use of some little brushes that rotate around the center base. And with this little adapter, uh, and with this little adapter, no, uh, this one, no, uh, well, after some attempts, I can slip it around the base motor and get the rotating power from the base to the shoulder joint. All the rest of the electronic stuff is mounted together with this bracket and it's all mounted to this lazy Susan. So right now it can just keep rotating forever. Wait a second, I'm doing all this designing but I don't even know if the motors are strong enough. Time to make my limbs. I was going to 3D print everything but considering the size of the arm, I decided to use something faster and easier, like these aluminum profiles as the main structure. That way there is a rigid structure holding everything together. So I got these square tubes. Now all I need to do is make a little cut and drill a little hole and ta-da! They hold the servos perfectly. It's going to be pretty heavy. So I put my base on a wide visa mounting plate. And yeah, well, the tape should be strong enough, right? All right, robot, show me what you got. Okay, that looks good. Nice movement, like, oh, oh, that's not smooth. Why is it, oh, why, why is it too tethering? Why are you moving so fast? Slow down, slow down, slow down. What just happened? Wait, why is the base not rotating? Is the stepper motor not strong enough? Oh my God, maybe getting the smallest one wasn't a smart idea after all. It seems the friction is like still pretty high. We're going to need a bigger motor. Luckily, all these stepper motors have the same basic shape. The stronger ones are just longer. Yes, let's give it another go. Let's fire test number two, let's go. 
Oh, it's, oh, 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 it's already going wrong. Uh, stop it. How do I? How do I? Oh, what do I do? Please relax, robots. Oh my god, what's it do? Oh my god. Ah, oh, why aren't you following your directions? Why aren't you going below the floor? Oh my, oh my god, what this crappy software. Oh yeah. Back to the drawing board. I need to check if the place I want to go is actually reachable without going through the floor. And like, also make sure it's not hitting itself. And while I'm back at programming, I might as well add a nice little GUI to select a position on the arm on the server. Look, it almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Run the tests again. All right, test number 24,736. All right, the rest of the motor seems strong enough and it's not wrecking itself. All right, all right, let's get some 3D parts off the shelf. We got the elbow joint, where I spent countless hours figuring out how I was going to put everything together. Because I made the covers slip on the tubes, there was no room to mount the servos before I did that because the bolts would just get in the way. That's why I got these long bolts, so I can mount them from the other side of the arm. The little bracket on the cover also makes sure that it stays in the same place and doesn't start sliding about. The wrist was designed a bit differently, with two parts, where the left side would be mounted directly to the servo, and the right side can be used to stabilize and hold the final wires. The small servo can then squeeze in between them. Oh, look wow. at that perfect fit. So satisfying. And then finally we have this little ring, that holds everything together. Oh yeah, do you guys like cable management? Yeah, oh, me neither. So I designed these clamp-on covers with magnets so I can hide all the ugly wires in the base. All right, let's give this arm a nice paint job and see if it actually works. All right, nice and smooth, this is much better. I can make him go up a little bit. I can make him go down a little bit. Hey, what's that? Don't tell me that. Uh, what are you going to do with that? My hair's gone! Ah, oh, damn you robot! Time you get off the floor! And onto the ceiling! Just like that! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we have all been waiting for. Prepare yourself to witness bedroom engineering at its finest. The first hand I have for you today is this phone mount. Alright robots, let's go down a bit. Meet, thank you. Alright, let's start the recording. Go back a bit. Perfect. Oh, oh, yes, yes, very good, very good. Oh, what is it, robot? You want the camera? Well, you should have just told me. Luckily for you, I have this mount over here that can fit this camera perfectly. All right, let's get you off this thingy. All right, the camera's on there. Um, don't mind the giant bed sheet. Let's just see, I'm kind of uh, pushing the limits here. And let's see what this thing can do. Look at all those guys with their fancy camera arms. Oh, oh. I can do just the same thing. Oh, I just like this. If you ever want a nice view of my room, like now is the moment. Whee! Let's just <laughs> relieve you from this. All right, camera arms are pretty cool, but I hear it guys already. How hard can it hit stuff? Well, lucky for you, I have just a thing. This boxing glove attachment. Let's just see how hard you can hit stuff. All right, the boxing glove is attached. Let's see what it can hit. I'm a little scared. Here, we're witnessing the local population strolling about their ancient temple. We can see that both males and females enjoy visiting this holy ground. The ancient structure has stood for over 3000 years. Its stability only rivaled by the earth itself. Wait, what is that in the background? Are these locals expecting this? Will this crush this beautiful city? Oh no, there it goes! Total destruction! Alright, that was pretty fun. Now, what should I do next with my robot arm? Post it in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you think robots are cool. And subscribe to see what I'll do with him next. And I'll see you guys next time. After I clean up all this mess. Ah, another successful project. Time to play some video games. Wait, where's my controller? Huh?